Hey, good morning, you tubulous. Eek, so coming at you here. Birds are a chirping, and I am a feeling good after our first test drive from yesterday's video. So today, I was just going to address some of the um, comments that we've been getting about our lithium setup. It's well, probably one of the most misunderstood things that I've done on my YouTube channel so far, putting these batteries in Frankenstein. Some people don't even know why there are four of them when I've already explained it a couple times. Each cell is three volts, and when we wire them up in series, we can actually get a 12-volt car battery for all of our 12-volt accessories like amplifiers and stuff like that. So in this video, I'm going to um, address something called balancing or when each cell has um, a, you know, voltage that may differ from one another. But I want to show that actually in this setup, each cell is perfectly balanced, not only to the tenth of a volt, not only to the one hundredth of a volt, but to the one thousandth of a volt and I will show you right now in this video we'll test this bank right here on the left so I can set my tripod up and get some uh, good shots for you along our series straps that we did with I thought it was half inch copper but I'm it may be three eighths I'm not hundred percent sure I'll get my calipers out one of these days so all right let's go ahead and set the tripod up and see how balanced these cells are let's turn on our multimeter and switch it over to DC volts little digital switch there and we are going to test the first cell which is right here and in order to do that we need to touch it to this negative not the primary negative which is actually 12 volts this right here will give us the voltage of just one cell if we connect it right here so let's go ahead and see what that is 3.326 3.326 so the six and the seven right there it's fluctuating between six and seven that seven and six is at the thousandths place. So let's remember that number, 3.326. Absolutely the same exact voltage down to the thousandth, guys. Down to the thousandths. And this is the second cell as we just connected the probes to the next cell right down here. We'll test it again just to, just to show you guys. 3.326. Now let's go to the third cell in the line, which is right here uh, below the cords. Try this one, 3.326. So not only is it 3.3 volts, it's matching to the hundredth and then to the thousandth. I couldn't even get any more um, accurate readings than this because my multimeter doesn't go over another decimal point. So let's do the last cell in the line, which is our guy over here for our negatives in the front. 3.326 and 3.327 just like the other one was kind of jumping around a little bit 3.326 so what do you think guys that is the 1000th place and it is absolutely identical so that should definitely clear up a little bit of your fears or maybe your concerns for this lithium bank everything is perfect everything is equal balanced and these things are very oh god i almost just choked very very safe environmentally friendly and uh safe um, for us to use if they were to malfunction. There was actually a post made on JY's site. It's not a standard lithium ion battery when it explodes in flames and smoke. It actually just gassed out a little bit and it really didn't even do much of a thing at all. I'll include the picture in this video. And uh, I mean, shit, there it is, guys. So let's go and test the, oh, let's turn our thing back on. Now we will test the entire voltage of the system going from this side to this side. We're gonna bridge the gap between our series, go straight to the parallel, and that is 13.29 volts. So just like in the beginning when I thought that the batteries were gonna rest around 13.2, I started my engine yesterday, so it still is gonna simmer off these next couple days. So I have no doubt in my mind that these batteries are gonna consistently rest around 13.2 volts. I hope this uh, helps clarify a little bit of the confusion that may have been caused by the lithium install here, but hell, it's just so beautiful, guys. I, I, I am so happy to have it, and I wanna answer one more question here, or maybe it wasn't so much a question, but uh, yeah, it was a question. Some people wondered why I have so many of these wires right here. Is it just for looks? Do you need that? Um, such and such. Well, let me just break it down a little bit. These things have the ability to supply what these guys do right here, all these big AGMs, are almost equivalent to just these two banks of green batteries that you see here. So in order to um, safely supply and, and get what we paid for out of the batteries, 
you need to have, you know, lots of wire. So let's just say each one of these wires can handle 300 amps on the, on the, on the low end. You know, they can handle 300 amps going 50 feet. That's what they're rated for. So let's just count these up real quick. 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. That's 24. 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. That's 48. So then 3, 6. So 48 plus 6 is 5,400 amps of of maximum current draw that we can get from these from these batteries right here. And our amplifiers are only gonna be pulling roughly 500 amps times six. So let's just say uh, 3,000 amps. So I have more than enough power to be supplying juice to those amplifiers. Oh, someone's calling me. You guys notice the Diddy Kong ringtone? All right, just got off the phone, so back to what I was saying. So all the amplifiers together are gonna be pulling roughly, let's just say like 3,000 to 3,500 uh, amps a piece. Let's just say on the high end, 3,500 at like max peak when lightning strikes and I'm burping at the same time. So regardless, we have more than enough copper to supply the amperage that we paid for going into our AGM bus bars. Now, why do we have them bust into our bus bars down here? Well, because our amplifiers are all connected right down the line. There would be way too many connections to try to fit our amplifier leads, which is four per amplifier, up here and over there. So we have them all down here. So in order to supply them equally, we gave them all their own little designated runs, just like we did from the AGM bank. So there's no bottlenecking. Ever since I built my first computer, I've always been very adamant and staying concerned about something called bottlenecking. So you have enough amperage coming in, coming out, just like the same concept of having two runs of power wire on one ground wire. There's no sense in having two runs of power wire in one ground wire since you need just as many grounds as power wire. That would be considered a bottleneck on your ground. So I kept everything in equal, kept the copper up to snuff, and just fucking loaded as much as I could afford into it so I could get what I paid for in the end. And so far it's been working out great. So uh, I hope this video kind of clarifies a little bit of the lithium technology that I'm employing this season. I'm gonna be doing more videos, uh, you know, with JY and with the Amp Lab to try to explain more of these cells since, you know, a lot of people are gonna be buying them in the future because of weight. These things weigh so little compared to an AGM 31 that it kind of makes it kind of makes the price make more sense when you're sagging in the back and then you can eliminate that with spending a couple more bucks. Maybe you can save money in the long run. So lithium isn't as bad as, as, as people think it is. Just because it's new technology, people are gonna choose to say shit that they may not know. These are actually lithium iron phosphate. So if you wanna do some more research, I'll actually include a link in the description. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video just explaining my lithium situation and uh, doing the balancing demonstration, showing down to a thousandth of a volt. Pretty damn impressive there for all the people who are curious. And then just explaining the wiring process and why we use so much of it and that it is a necessity, especially when you plan on maybe going bigger who the fuck knows, guys? I'm crazy. But, all right, until the next video, this is EXO signing out. I'll talk to you then.